Bucks next was crazy. And not really for the reasons why we, we thought it would be. Like, honestly, like, you know, you would think, like, all right, these are going to be, like, as a preview of the Eastern Conference Finals and what's going to happen here, what's going to happen there. But that game, to me, thus far, was the game of the year. Really went down to the wire. And it really showed the pedigree of both teams. Like, it showed Milwaukee's pedigree to say, like, look, we know you guys got you know, your big three and you got James Harden now, but we want to show you that we can still play. We had the best record in the past couple of years. Then you're looking at the Nets, it's like, shit, man, we just coming off of a, a, a nice little win and we're trying to build and we're trying to show everybody what the team to be. And Kevin Durant and James Harden really showed their dominance. James Harden, 30-plus, <laughs> uh, 10-plus assists, going crazy. Kevin Durant, played another 30-point game. And there were, like, little key things that I feel like a lot of people didn't really pick up on. You know, of course, deep offensively, the Nets are, like, damn near flawless. Because you got two guys that could go one-on-one, that can get a basket, that can command the double team, that can pass to the other for a, for a shooting. And James Harden, he's, even, he's shooting his uh, normal three-point percentage. Think about this, too, with Harden, right? He's still around side KD and hopefully Kyrie in the future. Look, he's going to even get even more wide open shots because he's not getting double teamed anymore because now they're going to start sending a double to more of the hot hand, which is KD or, or Kyrie, so to speak. You know, whichever guy gets hot. And that one itself is scary. But what also is scary is the Nets defense. It was bad. It was really bad. And I guess that's what made the game really good last night because it was like shot for shot. Milwaukee kept getting easy, oh, wide open shots. Kevin Durant and James Harden kept making spectacular, spectacular plays. And that's one. Of, that's their trump card right there. They have the ability to make spectacular plays on offense, make do spectacular things offensively, get crazy assists. James Harden got that offensive rebound, kicked to Kevin Durant, he has that big three. Those are the plays that they're able to make consistently and things of that nature if you give them the opportunity. But then when you look at him, at their defense, it wasn't there. And, you know, people think it's funny defense wins championships and, you know, you know, somebody made a point that, you know, the only team that hasn't been efficient in defense and has won the title recently was the 0-1 Lakers where they were, like, not even top 10 defense. Other than, other than that, you have to be a top 10 defense, top 10 offense. And the Nets... Defensively, they're not there. Of course, they're not there, though. You know, when I'm thinking, like, all right, you're being kind of hard on them, they just got together. They just were assembled. Like, they don't have a defensive scheme, or maybe they do and the guys aren't following it, or maybe they're saving it for the playoffs. When you're looking at the Bucks, though, it's kind of like the same old Bucks. They get to a certain point, and then it's like, instead of Giannis taking them home, you got a guy like Milton trying to make a play, or George Hill trying to make a play. Some a random guy trying to make a play that's not the main guy, which is Giannis. And for me, like Giannis is more like Shaq. Like you he gives you Shaq like numbers in terms of rebounding. Post ups. I mean this guy had like 12, 13 rebounds. He had like 30 points or so. I mean he was just dominating all kind of fashions. And then towards the end of the game, he gets like zero shots. That has to change, Coach Bud. That has to change. He has to get more than one or two shots in the last three minutes of the game. And it's not put back dunks or nothing like that. And one thing that I saw that he was kind of uh, elevating and learning from was he wasn't shooting as many threes. He shot threes, but when they're giving him a lot of room, he kind of came in and he took a little 15-footer. He needs to do that more. He doesn't need a three-point ball. He just needs the threat of a 15-footer. And pump fake, drive to the basket. That's it. That's all he needs. If you can consistently hit a 15-footer like Tim Duncan or um, Carl Malone, he is set for life. If he gets, he, I don't know why he wants to shoot the three so bad. He's set for life. But also with the Bucks, because the Bucks, I mean, who's gonna stop Kevin Durant and James Harden, right? But if you look at Orlando, they made it a little, a lot tougher than the Bucks did. And one of the key reasons is because Giannis Antetokounmpo, say that three times, he doesn't necessarily guard the guy's best player. So he's not trying to lock up a KD or a James Harden. And while he wouldn't lock them up, what he would do is 
he would force the refs to swallow their whistle. So he could get away with a lot more fouls, a lot more pushing, a lot more everything because they have to swallow their whistle because they don't want to say like, well, Giannis fouled out of the game because the refs blew the whistle and that's what they lost. They don't want to hear that. So the, when, when star players guard each other, they get away with a lot more. So that's something that Coach Bud has to really institute as well. If if the Bucks want to get far, Giannis has to guard people. He has to guard people, not off the wing. And this is our defensive. No, he has to guard people, period. People that are stars. Now, here's the thing with the Nets, when I'm going back to defense, right? People are like, well, it doesn't matter. You can play this, that, and the third. Here's where it matters. Kevin Durant last night, I believe he had five fouls. He had to sit him down in, I believe, in the second with, with the three fouls. Kind of James Harden took over, or he kept their head above water. But even towards then, the Bucks made a nice little run before the half ended. What happens when these guys get some foul trouble? Because you're going to play the upper echelon teams, and you know even though the Heat aren't the Heat any, like they were last year, Jimmy Butler is going to get James Harden in foul trouble if he guards him. Jimmy Butler is going to get whoever in foul trouble. Giannis is going to get somebody in foul trouble of your core. Now you don't have any more depth. So now where is that 30-point score going to come from? Because you got to remember this. Foul trouble is key. Even though guys say you can play with foul trouble, guys like KD, Kyrie, James Harden, once they get in foul trouble, that is a huge, huge thing. You see this a lot went on with Steph earlier in the, in, in the years of Golden State when, you know, they were assembled and everything. When Steph got in foul trouble, that put a monkey wrench in everything because you don't want to play Steph if he has three, four fouls because you still need him down the stretch of the game. So what happens if Kevin Durant gets four fouls or whatever the case is? So these are the little things that they really got to worry about and key in on the defense. It's still early, but you know everybody's saying they're going to the uh, NBA Finals, which is, you know, hey, it, it is what it is. They got the, they got the, they matched the most amount of talent. Their team is, is right for the picking to really go there. But I would like to see a a semi improvement. I think I think with the defense, it's just effort. I would like to see more effort on defense. Because here's the thing. You can't coach up that effort in the in the in the finals. See in the regular season, early postseason, you can kind of coach up the effort just a little bit. Once you get to those big games and those habits are formed and the guys aren't really contesting guys, then it's over. Because I'm gonna tell you the truth. If they play a team where a guy could get hot for four games, like let's just say LeBron was still in the East and he got hot for four games, I can see them losing that series. Even though they got all three of those, you know, I'm just, I'm just based it off of what I see now. I don't know how they're going to play with Kyrie. But if they can play against a team that a guy gets hot for four straight games or four out of five or four out of six games, they, they, they consistently get you a good amount of a burn because they're letting them get off. Kevin Durant isn't locking anybody up right now as constituted. James Harden isn't really there right now. And I know I know it's early, but I'm just saying, if Giannis had went for 40 last night, we'd be talking about a different ball game. If, or 38 or 37, we're talking about a different ball game. So that's something to keep in, in mind. Because the guys that they want want to guard, like Joe, you want Joe Harris to guard guys, you want uh, Bruce to guard guys, you want all these... Uh, you want DeAndre Jordan to pick up guys? Hey, somebody's going to have a field day. When, when that happens, what's the response? And and I know offensively they're going to respond, but defensively, all the little small nuanced things, that's what wins you a championship. And, you know, one thing I think a lot of people aren't talking about is I, I love it because I get to see it on the, East, on the East Coast. I live on the East Coast. I get to watch the Nets all the time. But do I re- do you really expect Kevin Durant and James Harden to keep giving you 30 every single night? Every single night to score 30, 10 assists. Like, do you... Because the way they're playing, it's like they're still playing like they want to maintain their numbers. Like, I'm playing because I still want to get my numbers. And to me, that's where the flaw could come in. Because now, offensively, you exp- ex- you're, have a high energy expenditure. And then on, after that... Now, all the small things, you're not going to want to do them because you're still trying to keep up with your numbers. So, like, honestly, do I really expect Kevin Durant to, like, keep averaging 35 and James Harden average 30, you know, 70, what, 68 games left in the season? Is that, is that, um, reasonable? 
And to me, that's not that's not reasonable. Like Kyrie needs to come back quick in a hurry. And I, you know, people might say like they don't need him. They need him. They need him because if one of those guys burns out and they get to the playoffs, I'm not gonna say they're gonna have an early uh, upset, but they will have a big.